And the first thing that the app does is it checks the 52-week low of the stock market every day. That's the annual low price. All of the stocks that have fell to their annual low price on that day. And it pulls up only the stocks with three or more positive years of earnings per share. Because most of the stocks on the stock market, they're not making money every year. Hey guys, I was recently in a conversation with one of the subscribers to my channel recently, and he had me thinking about something. We were talking, and as we were talking, I realized that of all the people who buy stocks and options, I assumed everybody was doing it for the same reason which was to make money. And I realized that I was actually wrong about that. I realized that people actually get involved in stocks and options for various different reasons. So I wanted to touch on that subject today. And first I'll start off with myself. Why do I buy stocks or options? So, I was introduced to stocks pretty young. I was a young kid watching the, the Jefferson. Some of you may be familiar with that show. Um, and I was watching the Jeffersons. He would get on the phone to speak to his stockbroker about buying stocks. I didn't know much about it um, at that point, much more about it, but that's when I was introduced to the concept. So, as I got older, and I started getting pretty decent jobs, because I was working in the IT field back then, um, and online brokerages were becoming more popular. Prior to that, you'd have to call up a stockbroker and get them to place your order. But with online brokerages, you could do it yourself. So online brokerages became more popular, and I decided to start buying stocks. So I bought my first stock, not able to talk about the name of who owned the company or what the company was. But I bought my first stock, and it was a pretty well-known personality who owned the company. And it was a $2 stock. I'm looking at it. And I said, well, it's $2. There's no way this thing can go down. And from there, it just started moving down and down and down until I sold it. And I was wrong about it. That stock started falling in proud pr price. I sold it at a loss. And I found the nearest classes that taught about how to analyze stocks. I took a class for, I believe it was around um, 150 back then. This was around early 2000s. And I just grew my knowledge from there. Now, I understand that stocks are shares of a company. And I pick my stocks at this point based on the fundamentals of that company. So let's take a moment to talk about why stock prices rise. Stock prices rise for one simple reason. Because more people are buying than selling. And they drop for one simple reason. Because more people are selling than buying. But for a lot of the people who invest in stocks, the vast majority of them are institutional owners, meaning these are large banks and institutions that are buying them. 
and those large banks and institutions have some very smart people picking them who know a lot about businesses. So if they know about businesses and that's what's making them choose those stocks, then you need to know something about businesses so you could be choosing the same stocks that they're choosing which is getting more buyers than sellers. So what are some of people's reasons for buying stocks? Some buy because they expect to make money. They don't know why, but they expect to make money because they see others are making money. Some just buy because they find the whole thing exciting. Some find it exciting and it's closer than going to a casino. You could sit right in your house and buy rather than driving one or two hours to a casino. They like the idea of owning parts of a business. But you could own parts of a business that's winning or you can own parts of a business that's losing money. They like the company. Oh, I love Coca-Cola. Oh, I love Pepsi. Whatever the case is. They like the company, so they're going to buy in the company. Whether that company is making money or not, they don't know. they make more money so they buy stocks why because now you have more money and what do people with money do they buy stocks so you start buying stocks i think that's really what got me into it like i said i was working jobs where i was making more money at that point my next step was okay well, I'm making more money now. Why don't I start doing things that people with more money start doing? I started buying stocks. Or they read Robert Kiyosaki and they want to learn how to have assets instead of just liabilities. And you have a lot of people who fit in that category and that's not a bad place to be. So let's talk about what your strategy is for picking stocks. Some people just watch financial news for upcoming events, maybe an earnings report, or maybe if it's a pharmaceutical company, they're waiting for FDA approval on a product. They look for the new things that are popping up, like cannabis legalized or AI. <laughs> they look for promising penny stocks because if they know if they're buying the penny stocks, they can get a lot more of them, which leads to more explosive returns. They look for promising chart patterns on the candlestick charts. That's technical analysis. Or maybe they just buy based on the fundamental analysis. That's the numbers. You know, what? what's their profit margins? Um, things of that nature. How does their balance sheet look and so forth? Or they buy based on a combination of fundamental and technical analysis. That's what I do. I look at the fundamentals and I choose what to buy based on the fundamentals. And I choose when to buy it based on the technicals. So, do you buy options and why? Do you buy them because they give you higher percentages 
or do you have a different reason why you prefer options? And what is your strategy for picking options? Are you looking for fundamentally sound companies? Did you see stocks that were mentioned on a website or a YouTube channel? What is your preparation for investing? Do you study the fundamental analysis, the company information? Do you study the technical analysis, the charts? Or do you study the fundamental analysis and watch the technical, like I said I do? Do you get information from online chat rooms or groups? Or do you listen to TV investing personalities like Jim Cramer or MSNBC? Do you watch financial news for upcoming events? Or was you introduced through some of Uncle Dwayne's watch list material, my YouTube channel? So, for those interested in successful trading, meaning buying fundamentally sound companies that grow in value, I have a suggestion for you. But before we get to that, I, I want you to leave your comments. Let me know. I just asked you a number of questions here. Give me some of the answers to these questions in you guys' situation in the comments. But having said that, let's jump into looking at some of the suggestions I have for you on how you could buy fundamentally sound companies at good prices. So for you guys who have been around watching my channel for a while, you know I would do stock analysis videos and I would do a this week's winning stocks. Well, the reason I would be able to offer the stock analysis on these videos is because I had a spreadsheet template that I would fill out, put all of these numbers in to break down the company, the high and low prices, earnings per share, percentage increase over the years, current and low PE, income statement with the profit margin, return on equity, debt on equity, or debt to equity, balance sheet. Then I break down things like the dividends, um, change in capital stock, meaning that they buy or buy back or sell shares of stock, free cash flow, free cash flow after dividends to see if they can afford to pay a dividend then we would wrap up with some information at the bottom now this is a task that would take me some time i spend a few hours every day doing this just filling out the spreadsheet alone would take me about a half an hour but before doing that, I would have to go to the 52-week low of the stock market every day looking for stocks that I was going to analyze. And there were so many of them down there that I could only focus on the ones 
that were $30 or more, just like you see this one is 68 But there was something that changed just recently. That was maybe a month ago or maybe a little more. If you guys saw recent videos like this one, you would see that I no longer do my videos from a spreadsheet. I do them from this app, the Stock Sage app. And the reason that I'm able to do them from this app, it's not an app that I found and I'm an affiliate of, so I'm trying to push it on you guys. That's why when I direct you guys to the app, you never see that I'm asking you to click on an affiliate link in my description or anything. Me and my wife actually took money to get this app developed for us and for you. I've been looking for a developer to develop an app like this for at least two years. And fortunately, I was just able to find someone recently. So we had money in our brokerage account buying stocks. We tapped into that money just to get it to the developer to create this. So I want to spend a little time letting you know why we made that decision to do that at this time. And the first thing that the app does is it checks the 52-week low of the stock market every day. That's the annual low price. All of the stocks that have fell to their annual low price on that day. And it pulls up only the stocks with three or more positive years of earnings per share. Because most of the stocks on the stock market, they're not making money every year. In a five year period, for a lot of stocks, you may find out that they've lost money every year. Some of them are losing money four years, three years, especially with penny stocks. I speak to a lot of people who have penny stocks, and they tell me their penny stock. I say, okay, and what do I do? I go and pull that stock up, and the first thing I notice is that for the last five years, the earnings per share was negative. They lost money all five years. Well, this app separates that. Any, If you look through this list, many of these stocks have made money all five years. But at the most, if you find any with negative years, they have two at the most. This one has a negative year in 2019. This one has a negative year in 2020, the COVID lockdown year. So the app already puts you ahead of the game because it pulls up stocks with at least three to five positive years of earnings per share for the last five years. And also on the balance sheet, it makes sure that total assets exceeds total liabilities, which makes for a, at least halfway decent balance sheet. It doesn't make sure automatically that current assets exceed current liabilities, but it makes sure total assets exceed total liabilities. Now, once it does that, it's doing half the work for you right there. But there's some other things that you can do to put you ahead of the game. Like I said, it makes sure the balance sheet is half good because it always makes sure total assets exceed total liabilities. But here's a filter 
where you could say, okay, only show me the stocks where current assets exceed current liabilities. So now with all the stocks that pull up, you know they're going to have healthy balance sheets. That makes the that makes the um, companies a little stronger, the list a little the list a little shorter. Now another thing we can do to make sure we get healthy companies is we could say we can either choose that we want the company to have stock buybacks all five years or four of those years or three of those years. I'm going to choose at least three of those years. That will make the list a little shorter, but still, it's a lot of companies. But now we're going to make the list a lot smaller because now I could say, on the income statement, I want the profit margin to be at least 10% for all five years. And now you'll see that our long list has gone down to five com four companies, I'm sorry. Now I'm going to make it even shorter. I could say instead of the profit margin being 10%, I want the profit margin for all five years to be greater than 20%. Notice, now it's down to two companies. Only two companies have that profit margin at 20%. Now, I said we like to see where a company's earnings per share is positive all five years, and that's true. But what I ideally want is for the profit, the earnings per share, to be increasing every year. Now, that's not happening with either of these companies. Market Access Holdings was $5.53 in 2019, $8.01 in 2020, $6.88 in 2021, $6.68 in 2022, and $6.87 in 2023. So, at least the earnings per share isn't dropping significantly, but it's not increasing every year. But I would say this is decent. Let's look at Diamond Hill Investments. And then that one, the earnings per share was $17.39 in 2019. $12.03 in 2020, $23.34 in 2021, $13.01 in 2022, $14.32 in 2023. So it jumped significantly in 2021. That one was an anomaly. But with the exception of that, it has been increasing since 2020. It dropped back from 19 to 20, but it's been increasing from 2020 on with the exception of 2021. But now I'm gonna go a step further. Here's another function that we've recently added to the app. Wasn't originally, originally on it, but we recently added it. Not only do we want it to give us stock buybacks, current assets exceeding current liabilities, and greater than a 20% profit margin, I'm going to say, show me if any of them has a dividend yield 
that is at 4% or greater. And now we're down to one company. That one company is Diamond Hill Investments. We already saw that the earnings per share has been moving up. It was $14.32 in 2023. It's projected to be $14.74 in 2024, which we're still in. It's not over yet because it's still June. Now, all of this information that I was previously putting in spreadsheets so I could break down for you guys, it's automatically pulled up for you in this app. There's a few, little bit of information you could fill out of here at the bottom, which you get from Yahoo Finance, Insider Investors, Institutional Investors, Dividend Date Next, Dividend Date, that stuff you find under Statistics in Yahoo Finance and Management and Competition. Um, well, actually, under Competition is what industry and sector it's in. You can find that in Profile under Yahoo Finance. And the rest you can Google. But in any event, most of this information is automatically pulled in for you by the app. It's right there. It's available. And actually, if you click on the printer, you can actually print out this information or you can just save it as a PDF, which I do on, on my hard drive as well. I have all of this information saved in a folder on my hard drive so that I can pull it back up and look at it whenever I want to. All of these files, or I should say, all of this research for these powerful companies which have the potential to make so much money and improve your trading. And all this information you can find at the Stock Sage software website. And if you go to the pricing tab, you will see it's all available to you for $129. Not a month, but $129 for a year. When you sign up, the first week is free. No money will be withdrawn until after a week. And if before that week you decide you don't want to go forward with the app, then you just go into the footer, send us a message to let us know, and your subscription will be canceled and no money will be taken out. But like I said earlier, this is not an app that I'm an affiliate on. This is something that I've built up over 20 years in getting a process to buying stocks of fundamentally sound companies at their annual low price that move up in value. And I was fortunately able to get a decent programmer to put the app together that can not only be used for, for the benefit of me and my wife, for us to make sound investment decisions, but now for you as well to be able to take advantage of. And it finds all kinds of stocks. 
it finds the expensive ones. It finds the inexpensive ones, whether they're a dollar, whether they're two dollars, whatever the case is. Every day, that information is sitting right at your fingertips. And the thing is, for me, I did a lot of this research, but it took time and I realized that somebody who's out there working, they don't have the time to do that same type of research that I was doing. But now with the app, it does the research for you. It pulls up all the information for you. All you have to do is look at it. And you and your wife or you and your husband can sit down and make your decisions. Or if you're, if you're single, you make your decisions alone. Choose what you want. But it puts you in a position of no longer continuing to work for money. But now putting your money in a position of working for you. Unless you want to spend the rest of your life working for money, no matter how old you get or no matter how sick you get, you want to develop ways of getting your money to work for you as well. In any event, guys, you have a great night. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.